In this lecture, we're going to talk about ionization constants of bases, known as Kb. But before we talk about this guy, we really have to understand these two components. So if you haven't already done so, watch the video below on autoionization of water and ionization of acids. Now, so let's begin. Let's suppose we have some hypothetical base, let's call it A. And this base in aqueous state reacts with a single water molecule in a liquid state. So what will happen? Well, our base will act as a base trying to take that H away from our acid, namely our water molecule. And these guys will create a conjugate acid, HA, and a conjugate base, our hydroxide uh, molecule. Both guys are in aqueous state. So the same way we wrote equilibrium expressions uh, for acids and for water, we can also write equilibrium expressions for bases as well. Except now we replace our Ka and Kw with Kb, or the ionization constant for our base. So Kb is equal to the conjugate acid, or the concentration of the conjugate acid, times the concentration of our uh, hydroxide, divided by our conjugate base. So in terms of this reaction, it's this guy the concentration of this guy times the concentration of this guy, so our products go in the denominator, over our conjugate ba uh, base, this guy. So our reactants go on the bottom, our products go on the top, just like they would for acids and for water. Now, the same way we spoke about Ka's being ratios in terms of ionization of acids, we could also talk about Kb's or ionization of bases being ratios. They're ratios of amount of product formed over the amount of reactants left. So that means the greater our value for Kb is, the more favorable our reaction is this way. And this means the better or stronger our, our base is. If this guy is greater than one, we can say that it's a strong base. If it's less than one, it's a weak base, and that's because if it's less than one, that means amount of reactant left is much greater than amount of product formed, and that means this guy hasn't really reacted yet, and that's because our base is a poor base. It's not very good at what it does. It's not very good at taking that H away from that acid. So once again, if a Kb is high, then that means it's a good base. If it's low, it's a bad base. Now let's see what happens when we multiply Ka times Kb, or the ionization constant of acids times the ionization constant of bases. Well, let's rewrite Ka, or well, let's first rewrite Kb. Well, Kb is simply this whole guy here. So Ha multiplied by OH, or the concentration, divided by concentration of A. Now, if we go back to the video for ionization of acids, which you'll find right here, uh, you'll notice that Ka is equal to this guy times the hydronium concentration divided by HA, or the concentration of HA. Now, let's see what happens. Well, this guy and this guy cancel, right? So this guy, that's oh, a bad marker. This guy cancels, and this guy cancels. Also, this guy cancels, and this guy cancels. So we're left with hydronium concentration times the hydroxide concentration. And if you go back to the video for autoionization of water, which you'll find right here, you'll see that this guy simply equals Kw. So we see that when we multiply Ka times Kb, what we get is Kw. So this is an important relation. Now, what happens if we take the log of both sides? Well, if we take the log of both sides, we get PKW is equal to PKA plus PKB. Remember, according to the laws of logs, when we take the log of this, this becomes addition, right? And this equals 14. Now, if you're not sure where this came from, how I got from this point, to this point, check out the video below. At the end of the video, I talk about the laws of logs, and I show you how I go from this to this guy, or something similar to this to this guy. So our end result is that 14 equals pKa plus pKb.